close our eyes and lift up, uh, our eyes to the Lord and uh, pray earnestly that this evening time that uh, God just, uh, really bless us with his rich presence. Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes and let's look to the Lord and pray. Almighty God, loving Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for this evening time. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Once again, we praise you and thank you for your presence this evening time. As we gathered here as a uh, Northeastern uh, region PYPA uh, meeting, Lord, uh, as a worship and, and uh, uh, from the Word of God, Lord, we pray that in this evening time that your presence must be with us, Lord. Hallelujah. And let each and every one of us, hallelujah, be experience the presence of the Lord this evening. Hallelujah. Help us to worship the Lord with the beauty of His holiness, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray and summon each and every one of us, those who are singing, the, uh, the, the servant of the Lord who uh, delivered the message, Lord. We pray this evening, hallelujah, that the presence of the Lord, hallelujah, mightily, hallelujah, move in this place, Lord, hallelujah. And let uh, those who are sitting here, those who are planning to come this evening time, hallelujah, let's go together, hallelujah. This presence of the Lord must be Walking in the midst in the midst of us, Lord, Hallelujah. We pray, pray uh, your your presence, Hallelujah. Let each and every one of us experience and uh, uh, and see miracles in this in this place, evening, Hallelujah. And help us to Hallelujah worship the Lord in truth and spirit, Lord. And uh, the the presence of the Lord mightily move in this place, Hallelujah. We praise you and give all the glory and honor to your Lord, Hallelujah. We submit the worship team in your hand, Lord, and uh, take, take control of this uh, team. And we pray for the uh, Northeastern Region PYPA officials and bless them, Lord. Thank you for organizing this meeting in this evening. And we once again be submitting everything in your hand. We ask for this is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Dear God, we thank you, Jesus, for this time of worship that you've given us, God. Um, but I thank you for everyone that's here today. I pray that as we sing these songs, that you need to be glorified and that let them want to speak to our story. Help us worship you. Um, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
God is a God who mends the brokenhearted. He's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. He's our eternal defender and everlasting help. Amen. We are very grateful that you are here. Please be seated. Uh, I bring greetings uh, from this church. Uh, my name is uh, Alex Zubin. I'm the youth director of Shalom and the Pastoral Tabernacle. Uh, I bring greetings from the board, uh, the secretary, Mr. Umo Shamo, and the senior pastor, Reverend James George Umman. Uh, I welcome on behalf of IPC Eastern Region PYPA. Uh, we are very grateful that you guys are here. Thank you for honoring us with your presence. At this time, I request uh, Shara, who is one of the executive of PYPA, to come forward. And she's going to let us know about the upcoming events. Uh, PYPA is going to host. Thank you for leading us 
with the Spirit of God that has been leading us all this walk through these years, oh God. We come into today's service in your hands, oh God. We pray for the minister of God who is going to bring the word of God. We pray that the Spirit of God will come forth with power and anointing. We pray for those who will come here with burdens and sickness. We pray that they will find their peace and healing in this place, oh God. We pray for those who are going through hardships that they cannot even talk to other people about. May the Spirit of God minister to them as the Word of God comes forth, O oh God. We commit every service into your hands, O oh God. We pray for the choir, O oh God. We pray for those who are singing and ministering, O oh God. May the Spirit of God guide us, O oh God. We thank you for the offering that's going to take place, O oh God. We pray that the Spirit of God help us to use it for the glory of God and for the extension of the kingdom of God, giving you all the glory and honor in Jesus' loving name.
This is the thing that made men subdue kingdoms. Men who destroy lions with their bare hands. It's the power of God. There is something called coronavirus. I'm not afraid of corona. Amen. Because he that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge and my fortress. Hallelujah. My God in whom I will trust. Hey, are you hearing what I'm saying? A thousand shall fall by my side. Ten thousand at my right hand. But it shall not come near my dwelling. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. He that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Let the sick say, I am healed. Let the weak say, I am strong. Glory to God. We cannot scream like the world. We operate in a higher frequency. Come on, I didn't take your English. So we cannot be disturbed like the world. Let those who are not in Christ, for I am healed in Christ and in Christ in God. So before you touch me, you must first touch Jesus, touch the Holy Spirit, then you can get me out. So Corona is a little baby. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Woo! What corona is nothing. Ask the, he the heroes of faith. There's a man called Alexander Dome. Alexander Dome stepped in Africa when there was an outbreak like corona. When it broke, everybody was running away from South Africa. And when he went there, the virus that was killing people, they took the same thing, put on Alexander Dobby's hand, and put it under the microscope, and they watched the thing die. There are some who carry in this kingdom what that which is coming out from the world cannot affect them. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. I don't hear your amen. I say, He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Wherever a demon is coming from, it will not be your portion. Somebody say, I am called. You are called in the name of Jesus. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? I felt like sharing that one from my spirit. Because many of you are disturbed. I have a lot of my spiritual sons and daughters all over the country, and others all over the world texting me. This last couple of days, we hear Corona is everywhere. I say, yeah. But you are not part of Corona. You're operating from a higher frequency. We are ambassadors of heaven. Hallelujah. We come down from heaven. We don't belong. Our citizenship is not of this world. We belong to another frequency. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. We're going to help you tonight. Genesis chapter 5, verse number 24. I was just one of the I come from a country where you also speak French. Glory to God. One of the simply means enjoy your meal. So we're still just starting to enjoy our meals tonight. Glory to God. Genesis chapter 5, verse number 24. If you're there, let me hear you say amen. It's just a scripture. The Bible says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not. For God took him. <laughs> For Enoch walked with God and he was not. For God rushed on him. Philippians, the third chapter. Philippians, chapter. Philippians chapter 3. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. From verse number 7, the Bible says, But what things were gained to me, those things I have counted loss for Christ. Yet doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whom I have suffered 
the loss of all things and do count them but not that I may win Christ and be found in him. Glory to God. Not having mine own righteousness, which is in the law of the Lord, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Glory to God. Glory to God. And Enoch, the Bible says in Genesis 5, 24, walked with God and he was not. Enoch walked with God and he was not. Been praying for this meeting. I just came out of a 40 day fasting, praying and waiting upon the Lord, which is something that I do at least four times every year. And I just came out and I've been trusting the Lord that somebody will enter into a dimension that you've not entered before in your walk with God. Amen. One of the things with the kingdom of darkness is that the kingdom of darkness understands how to fraternize and take over communities, cities, and nations. But the church is yet to understand how to engage God and take over cities and communities for the kingdom of God. <clears throat> that is why, men of God, young people can leave, stay at home, serve God, behave well. The moment they step on a university campus, a young men, young women who have served the Lord, kept themselves to the Lord, and they said, I will stay like this until I get married. And it's not two months, three months, they step on that campus and they are disflowered because of the spirits that control the atmosphere. You're not hearing my English here tonight. Because there are spirits that run regions. I said there are spirits that control places. Did you hear what I said? It's either the spirit of God is running a place or the spirit of the enemy is running that place. And some power must subdue the other power. If the power of God does not subdue you, the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of darkness will have a field there. And I came here tonight to introduce a message that will help somebody Get to a place where your Christianity is not just about you, but you will start to colonize people and also colonize communities for the glory of God. Yes. Witches and wizards can stand in a place and they hijack the atmosphere. Listen to me, you carry something that you can influence and hijack and take over cities and communities. But you must understand how to take over, how to hijack, how to be able to take over in the kingdom of God. A 10 year old Muslim boy does not have a problem sacrificing his life for the cause he believes in. Because from the age of zero, his eyes were open to a lie and a demon began to talk to them. And he knows that he can die at the age of whatever. And something will be waiting for him on the other side. Amen. Listen to me. Your life will not start to count until everything that is about you goes down on the cross. Amen. I said until everything that is about you goes down on the cross. And God starts to live through you. Amen. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? I said can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Walking. Walking the, the title of my message tonight is Walking in the Spirit. Before you were wrapped up in this vessel, you are spirit. The Bible says, The Lord God said, Let us make man in our image. And I just shared with you John 4 24. God is a spirit. So God is not flesh. Make no mistake about it. God is not flesh. God is a spirit. Am I communicating to somebody here? And if you know your scriptures very well, you will also know that Lucifer and all his followers, they are spirits. 
and they cannot have their expression upon the face of the earth until they have a vessel they can occupy to express themselves. Somebody's not getting what I'm saying. The devil cannot have an expression here on earth until he's able to occupy someone and then he can express himself. That is called demon possession. But you see, many of you have not yet come to a place where God has possessed you. But it takes God possession for you to also be able to influence places. Amen. Amen. You know, if you're hearing what I'm saying. Amen. Are you with me tonight? If you're hearing me, wave your hand to Jesus. If you're hearing what I'm saying. The Bible says this was after the fall of man. You have a man called Enoch shows up on the, on the scene like seven generations later. When man had fallen, everything about man, the Bible says that he repented the Lord that he had created man. When God now will look at man, man was not different from all the other beasts of the field. The dominion he had given to man, man had lost his place. Yet a man called Enoch, he showed up on the scene and he defied all odds and he began to walk with God. Amen. I said he began to walk with God. All it takes is one man to start walking with God. He began to walk with God. And the Bible says he not walked with God and he was not. Did you hear that? He walked with God and he not was not. So if he not was not, who was? If Enoch was not, who was? Who occupied the scene? If Enoch was not, then God was. If Enoch was not, then God was present. You see, the reason I can see your face is because you are here. But many of you, if you carry the Shekinah glory of God, when you show up in the place, you are not the one that appeared. God appeared. Because you become the vehicle in which God moves. You become an extension, an expression Hallelujah. of the Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. How many of you are hearing what I'm saying here tonight? You become an expression. You know, but let me defy some of your theology tonight. You know, many of us we say, I'm Christian. And that comes by you saying it. Can I blow your mind tonight? When Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, he said, when the Holy Spirit will come, he said, he didn't say you will be Christians. He said you will be my witnesses. You know what a witness is? A witness is an expression of a person. If I'm a witness, it means the person that I am is not really who I am. I'm representing someone else. You're not listening to me. In Athens, when they were called Christians, they were not the ones who called themselves Christians. They called them Christians because when they looked at them and looked at Christ, there was no difference. Because they were expressions of Jesus. I said they were expressions of Jesus. Becoming a Christian is not what you say. It is what you express. It is the extension of the Father that you are. Come on, somebody, if you're hearing shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody, if you're hearing this shout hallelujah. Hey! Are you hearing what I'm saying? You become an expression. Somebody's an expression. Why would Jesus say to you, you will lay your hands on the sick and they will be healed? You think your hands can do anything? No, 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 no. There is someone on the inside of you. When you put your hands, it is not you that put your hands. You become an extension, an expression of the Father. My hands can do jack. My hands can do nothing. But when God invades my life, everything about me, in Him I live, in Him I move, and in Him I have my being. When you see me, you don't see me. You see God through me. Ah! Glory to God in the highest. I feel something we're going to start a fire in here tonight. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? I said, can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? Becoming an expression of the Father. He not walked with God and he was not. Because when you walk with God, you are not. I 
said, when you walk with God, you are not. It's not about you. It's about God. That's why ambassadors, they don't represent themselves. They represent the nations they are from. The Bible calls us ambassadors. And if I really am an ambassador, I'm not here to represent myself. I'm here to represent the Father. Not the So when people see me, they should not see me. They should see Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. With the hands of the here tonight. That's how we will influence our world. That's how we will take our world. That's how we will change our world. We will not change it by talk. We will change it by becoming an expression of the Holy Spirit. Woo. When you step anywhere, the enemy should be running out of town because you got there. Come on, talk to me. I say, talk to me. Because of what you carry. It says you will put your foot and the where the source of your feet will stand, you will possess the nation. Your feet can do nothing, but God just wants to use your feet. Hey! I say he wants to use your feet. Wherever you step, let the feet of God plant that ground. Let it become a ground that once upon a time was invaded by devils. And when you get to the city, Jesus says, all right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I'm a man of the spirit. I'm not a man of the flesh. I walk by faith. I'm not by sight. They that are led by the spirit, they are sons of God. Become a son of God.
You cannot notice where I'm talking about if everything still comes to you. Nah, 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 nah. See, God must work on your appetite. Oh, you need to eat everything. Oh, I love this food. You know, some people eat food so they eat it like their lives are hanging on it. Hear me. Oh, I used to love food when I had demons. I used to eat. When my stomach gets full, I'm angry, my stomach was full. Because I wanted to eat some more. Because demons just demand for you to feed the flesh. Feed some more. Feed some more. Just feed again. Ah, then when I became born of the Spirit, another demand was placed on the inside of me. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I began to hear the words of God. And when I will make up on heart, I will try to eat. But the Spirit of God will constrain me. And it will say, you cannot eat. For the next 40 days, you will be fasting. People oftentimes they ask me, Pastor, do you have a favorite me? I say, I'm not sure. Because sometimes people prepare, they can invite me. And by the time I show up at your house, before I got there, the Spirit of God just told me, You are fasting, bro. And then I got there to say, Man, I can't be prepared all of this, waiting for you to come. I'm not a man of the flesh, I'm a man of the Spirit. So I don't please people, I please God. Oh, you see, you're looking at this face now. Can you imagine if you prepared me and you invited me to come over? And by the time I said I'm coming, while wow, I'm just telling me this running to your house, I heard the voice of God say to me, Bruh, fasting day. And then I came to your house, you'll be looking at me crazy. You're going, man, Jesus Christ, this guy, he should eat, bro. Are you, are you listening to what I'm saying? But when you walk in the spirit, your appetite in the flesh, it dies. You start to have appetite in the spirit. Jesus said, my meat, my meat, my meat, my meat is to do the will of the Father. You don't understand what that means. My meat is to do the will of the Father. When I wake up every day, my desire is to give God pleasure. Because I've ceased from giving myself pleasure. And I'm not all about him. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't hear you. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody here? I'm going to help you in a few minutes. Listen to this. I just want to set the stage for you to know this is of the spirit and not of the flesh. Come on. We wake up every day. People in this side of the world, and other parts of the world, have been to almost all the continents of the planet. And by the grace of God, you know, you find people, all they are waking up is to satisfy their appetite. What they will eat in the morning, what they will eat in the lunchtime, and what they will eat for dinner. Oh my goodness. What I'm going to earn when I get out of college and when I get out of the university. This is what my salary is going to be like, and this is the car I'm going to drive, and this is the kind of home I'm going to. Everything is in the flesh. God has no place. And then you find the same person who will quote Proverbs 3, verse number 5, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. You don't know that scripture. Go sit down and meditate on it again. Trust in the Lord, not some of your heart, all of your heart. And lean not unto thine own, all of thine own understanding. Put it in a basket. In all of your ways, not some of it. All of it! So which means you could finish the master's degree and he tells you to put it in the dustbin because he will be sending you as a missionary in Paraguay. Those are men who hear the voice of God. Paul was a qualified man and he said everything that used to be gained to me, I have counted it loss for the sake of Christ. Hallelujah. Come on now, you're not talking to me in this house. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. For many years, I had a good government job. Many years. And the Holy Ghost said to me, you are quitting. I said, is that so? He, I said, he said, yes. I said, bro, you know the bills. And you know all of what I'm taking care of around the world. He said, you are quitting. Stop serving tables and serve me entirely. And when I got out there, everybody talked, yeah. 
You don't put in a more, few more years and get retired and get paid out of this. I said, I would rather obey God than obey man. I don't know where the next meal will be coming from. But he, the Bible says, they looked unto him and their faces were radiant. And they were not ashamed. Am I talking to somebody here? Hallelujah. They that trust upon the Lord, they shall never be put to shame. Can I hear somebody say, Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's almost two years now since I resigned. And I said, every day I wake up, I said, Holy Ghost, good morning. And when they are bills, I say, you know how to take care of them, right? I serve you and I take care of your needs. You better take care of mine. You see, you can only point your finger like that in the face of the Holy Ghost if you love him. <laughs> and after you know you have obeyed him. Like some of you, you don't even know what you need and what you want. Because you have not done all that you need to do. The Bible says after you have done all that you need to do, stand therefore. At the times I waited. Oh yeah. They were came so close. I thought, man, probably I'm gonna lose my house or lose this or lose that. Just before that, I share you this one testimony. If I continue. I had an invitation to be in Dallas, Texas to preach. This was last May. And when I was ready to go, I was ready to go. I heard the voice of the one that I served. He said to me, boy. Cancel the trip. I said, what? All the people will be waiting. He said, it's not your business. I said, ah. I called the pastor there. I said, I'm not coming. He said to me, what do you mean you're not coming? We just did all the program and all of this. I said, the boss just said, I shouldn't come. So I'm working for the boss. If he doesn't send me, I don't have his packet. At that time, I had some real serious needs with all the orphanages and everything all over. I needed some serious money. And that day, it was the first day. I didn't fly to Dallas. I stayed home and all I was doing was Kede, Lazar, Lebrak, Tamalida. I give you praise. I worship you. You are the one that has called me. And you know how to satisfy me. And I know how to satisfy you. We are in a love making experience. Hallelujah. I give you what you need and you give me what I need. Hallelujah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I needed to pay some bills. I promise you that. Monday, he said to me, Boy, drive down to Washington, D.C. So what you don't do, man. You need to come out of the cocoon you are in. I didn't know why I was driving to Washington, D.C. for it. I just drove! And then when I went, I ran into this doctor whom I worked on a project with. And she said to me, Walter, this woman is an atheist. Where have you been? I said, I resigned. He said, is that so? He said, what do you do now? I said, sir, in Jesus as usual. She said to me, is that so? I said, yes. Jesus! I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of the gospel without one time. She said, I love your Jesus. I said, yeah. She said to me, okay, can you stop by? Monday, this is Monday, Wednesday, come to my office. I said, to your office. Said, yeah, just come and stop by. Let's talk. Let's have coffee and just catch up for all time's sake. Five minutes talk, you'll be done. Because you'll be boring me now. Glory to God. You want to talk to me about what? I'm a man of the spirit. And when I got there, she handed me an envelope. And she said, I just want to give you a little token for your ministry. I said, Is that so? She said, There you are. I laid hands on her. I said, Father, bless this woman. Bless her. And I said, Before you get out of this earth, you will receive Jesus. She shook her head. She said, Oh, okay, okay, okay. I said, Yeah. And I walked out. Go into my car, I thought she gave me some change, like probably 250 or 300. I opened the check, and unbelieving atheist woman gave me a check of $20,000. How long does it take for you to make that? Say amen. I see you not see your face. Say amen. Hallelujah. You know, say a better amen. Say a better amen. Because if you hear the voice of God, you will put you on course. And bills were taken care of. Walking in the spirit, you shall.
shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. I have counted everything done for the sake of Christ. Everything that used to matter to me has not mattered anymore for the sake of Christ. If somebody is here, shout hallelujah. I can hear you shout hallelujah. Yet he had to go through some things. 
so that his flesh will be squared up. So that at the end of the day, you will not say, God just gave him a pass and he wants you to live. The Bible says he was tempted in every day, every way, yet without sin. So which means you can be tempted and you still come out of that place victorious sin. Don't take your amen. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. You are not supposed to fall in sin because he has given you the power to live a righteous life and also to live a holy life. That will give the power glory. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says without holiness, no man shall see God. It's not only in heaven for us to be able to see the wonders of God on the earth. Without holiness, you can't see his wonders. Hallelujah. God operates with the frequency of holiness. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Holiness! John the Baptist, the Bible says he was in the wilderness. In the wilderness, eating locusts and wine only until the time of his sending forth. He was a prophet born, anointed by heaven, squared by heaven. But the Bible says he was in the wilderness until the time of his ending forth. When you are called, you are made, and then you are sent. You didn't hear what I said. You are called, equipped, and sent. That's why Jesus said, follow me, I will make you. The making is a process. But then he told them, do not leave Jerusalem until you've been enrolled with power from on high. Because if you go, you will make a fool of yourself. Come on. I said, you make a fool of yourself. But when the power comes, then you will now become my witnesses in Jerusalem, to their Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. You hear people say, God has called me, but has he made you, and has he sent you? Who would have heard that And you have a lot of people rebelling. Oh, I hear the voice of God, I hear the voice of God. Yes, we don't doubt it. But let him prepare you. And let him send you. When he sends you, he will give you his back. Hallelujah. Don't jump out there before you have his back. Now look at this as I begin to close. Something will happen in your life tonight. Jesus, man of God, or man of God, this is what happened. As he began to grow, the Bible says he went through all kinds of stuff. Then John the Baptist, the anointed prophet, why I call him that thing is because of Jesus said, among all the sons, the prophets that were born, there was none like John. How many of you are hearing what I'm saying? John was prepared just to release Jesus on the earth. Amen, somebody. And the Bible says he cried in the wilderness. He cried because he was sent. And men went to hear him in the wilderness. I said they went to hear him in the wilderness. Because when you have the backing of God, no geographical location, people will follow you wherever you are. I don't hear you hear somebody. It's not about the location where you are. When you have the power of God, it will draw men to where you are. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? I said, can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. People ask me all the time. You go around the world preaching the gospel and people gather in their thousands. I said, what is the difference? I said, the difference is what I carry. And the angels that walk with me. When I enter a city, the angels gather people in that city. But when you don't have power, you do everything. And the Bible says, by flesh shall no man prevail. Come on, shout it there. The title of this message is Walking in the Spirit. Come on, come on, come on. I'm trying to draw this to a close. Listen to this. Hear this. There is so much in my spirit to share. But hear me as I want to draw because I want to pray for some of you. Jesus came. At the age of 30, he stood. Oh, on the land to be baptized by John. John had just made a statement, man of God. He said, The one that shall come after me, I baptize you with water. But the one that shall come after me, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And he shall have the fan in his hand. He shall separate the wind from the tars. I am not worthy to untie the latchet of his shoes. And while he said all of that, he knew that one of those days, Jesus would stand on the line to be baptized. And while he was baptizing that day, Jesus showed up. And then his eyes suddenly opened. 
Remember, it was his cousin in the flesh. But he didn't know he was the Messiah in the spirit. Hallelujah. You didn't if your eyes are not open, you can't see him. You can't know him. I say you can be so close and yet you will not know him. When I gave my life to Christ, everybody around me, my entire family, that sad demons, they looked at me, they said, no way. And it became a fight. They wanted to kill me. Every one of them wanted to kill me. No doubt I have such a stubbornness for God. And I stood and I began to, you can imagine one against a thousand. And I began to chase in the spirit. And I said, the wall and the line has just been drawn. We will see who will fall. And I was on my knees. I was like this, fasting and praying. Every day and every year. I was praying, breaking the powers of the enemy. And praying for them to be delivered. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The devil is contending for the soul of your family members. And it does not take just John 3, 16 from your mouth. For them to come to Christ. In this spiritual warfare. I say in this spiritual warfare. Sir, Moses did not just go down to Egypt and just go there, there. Let my people go. The guy tried it in the flesh and he failed. And Pharaoh ran him into the wilderness for 40 years. When God appeared by the pillar of fire in the burning bush, he said, You run from that man. 40 years ago, but I'm sending you back to him. And he said, Do you know who you are sending me to? You are sending me to the most powerful man on the planet. And he said, I know. He said, when I go, what will I say? Who will I say send to me? He said, tell him the I am that I am. God said to Moses, I will make you a God to fail. I will make you a God to fail. You left as a man, but you are going back as a God. When you walk in the spirit, you leave situations as a man, but you go back as a God. Because of what you can. I told my family members, it is too late for any of you to serve the devil. It is too late for any of you to go to hell. I will bring you out of that kingdom. I began to pray. I began to fast. I laid hands. And I began to pray those spirits in the realm of the spirits. Every night while they were going to reach their coffins, I began to destroy. And I invaded heaven, commanding the angels from heaven to take over my family and demolish all the money all tasks. If I knew it, my sister that I followed directly, who was also in the witchcraft coffin, she fell on her knees, and the power of God entered her life, and she was free from the powers of darkness. One by one, one by one, one by one, every one of them began to enter the kingdom of God. I said they began to enter the kingdom of God, not by words, but by the power of God. Somebody shall hallelujah. It's not in words, but it's in power. I say it's in power. We must take over cities by power. We take over nations by power. Hey! The devil is a liar. I'm sending you tonight. I say, Moses, back to your family. Whatever has troubled your family, you will go back and start troubling that spirit. Maybe sickness, maybe a disease that goes way back. Cancer has been catching everybody. Destroy that nonsense. It's the spirit. And address the spirit from the kingdom of darkness and cut it off. Put the axe on the tree. So that you can be free and your family can be free. Hallelujah. But the problem with us, Pastor, is that many of us, we have not yet come to the point whereby we are ready to deny our appetites. And let the Holy Ghost sing over. When he talks to you to fast, you can hear. When he talks to you to pray, you love your bed. You can, can you can just cuddle and sleep and say, Woo! Don't type off those eight hours. Hello. Eight hours does not give you rest. 
You can sleep two and still get up tired. Everybody asks me, you just every day, whether I'm fasting or not, I hardly eat. Every day I'm almost fasting. Every day I'm in the presence of God. What is it about you? I said, there are things I see. There are kingdoms I'm about to take over. And any man who operates in this kingdom, you don't live ordinary lives. You don't live the lives of the civilians. If you're part of the army, the Navy seal, you don't live like everybody. You hit the gym every day. If you're getting away, wave your hand to Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, if you're getting away, wave your hand to Jesus. I say, if you're hurting me, wave your hand to Jesus. I say, if you're hurting me, wave your hand to Jesus. I say, if you're hurting me, wave your hand to Jesus. The Bible says, Jesus stood on the line. And when he stood on the line, the eyes of John were open. And John said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin. And then Jesus said to John, baptize me. John said, no, 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 no. I can't do that. No, 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 no. With what I've seen, I can't do that. And Jesus said to John, suffer it to be so for now. Suffer it to be so for now. There are certain things God will allow you to be so for now. So that God will be glorified later. And he put him in that water. I'm about to close when he was coming out, sir. The Bible says the heaven is open. Ah. I thought it was the Son of God that came. Did heaven have to open? Yes, he did. He opened and the voice turned out from heaven. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And the angel descended upon him like a dove. And the Bible says, after that, you think it was over. If that was some of you men, you are going to ministry straight. No. The Bible says, after that, he was led of the Spirit into a wilderness where he was tested and tempted 40 days and 40 nights.
about him when I'm bored. Pastor, I have no taste for anything in the flesh. Woo! If you ask me my best restaurant, I don't have any. Oh, what's wrong with you, Pastor? I don't know what's wrong with me. Jesus is wrong with me. Did you just hear what I said? What is wrong with you? I don't know what's wrong with me. The only thing I can tell is Jesus is wrong with me. Because I used to have appetite, but my appetite has been snatched for the glory of God. I don't need for myself anymore. I now need for Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I said somebody shout hallelujah. Be a man of the spirit. I said be a man of the spirit.
You're not supposed to go glory and then ding bling. It's glory to glory to glory to glory. You've really been feeling the move of God in your heart to serve Him and to walk in the Spirit. But the distraction of this life has held you back. And you don't know how to crack it and walk in the Spirit. I also want you to come forward. And tonight, I want to stand with nothing without His presence and without His power. I can tell you that. I enter meetings and demons are screaming. It doesn't take my voice. Demons have no business obeying my voice. Do that quickly now. Thank you, Jesus. If you're here, you are battling with your walk with the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You say anyone like that battling? I heard in my right ear when I was here earlier. There are some of you spiritually who are dealing with my nation. And there are some addictions you are dealing with. And you want God to liberate you from that addiction. I don't know why it is. Some of it, some of you, I heard the Spirit of God says is the internet. Internet or something in your computer. There are things on it that's messing you up. I don't want to call those things. Walk out here. And I tell you, by the way of the Spirit, I can pick you directly in there. But I'm not going to wait. And I give you the adoration. Thank you, Jesus. Lebrans Malakadibrahataya. Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. After today, they are walking like never before. And they are living for you like never before. To you be glory. To you be honor. Every hand lifted up. Every hand lifted up. I pray that the garment that was on Enoch, it will come upon. To worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, hearing our prayer. In Jesus' most precious and wonderful name we pray. Love of the Father, constant communion of the Holy Spirit, be with us forever and ever. Amen. Please, you may be seated. And God bless you all. Please don't eat without eating the food that is provided downstairs.